Aloha mai kako, uh, ovo kuule bazilla, and I have here with me uh, Kahau Kepua Aipia Peters and Dr. Julian Nozi. Mahalo nui, the two of you, uh, for being able to spend time with us to uh, talk story. I wanted to for me. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to start off um, with uh, introductions. So maybe we can start uh, with you, Dr. Judy, and could you please um, share a little bit about yourself, um, your background, and what it is that you do um, professionally as a career? Uh, yes. Uh, so my name is Julien Lozy. I am from France. Uh, I am an optical scientist at the Subaru Telescope uh, on Mauna Kea uh, in Hawaii. Uh, I've been uh, at the telescope for uh, nine years almost um, and in Hawaii for, for that long. Um, I've visited Hawaii many times before since 2008 when I did an internship uh, also at the Subaru Telescope. Um, and uh, so my field is uh, in exoplanet imaging. So exoplanets are planets around other stars and we try to take pictures of them with, uh, with the telescope. And it's very challenging because uh, the atmosphere is blurring the image and the planets are very faint and very close to their star. So we need to, to tackle these two issues uh, to be able to take pictures of them. And so I'm building an instrument for the, the telescope uh, um, yeah, to take images of those planets. Nice. Um, that's actually a really perfect um, segue actually, because we were able to have our um, recent cohort, our Ahua Heinoa cohort, um, get to talk story with you about Exoplanet and the Exo Naming competition um, this past fall. Um, so with that, um, Kaho Kepa, if you can please introduce yourself, um, who you are, where you're from, uh, the school that you go to, and then uh, maybe how you got into the work at Ahua Heinoa and why you chose to kind of dive into this work. Uh, aloha mai kako. My name is Kaho Kepa Aipia Peters. I am from Puna, Hawaii, and I am a senior at Kekula Onawahio Kalani Opu. And some of my presumptions when I was asked to participate in Ahua Heinoa, the internship, were that I will learn uh, something new about the solar system and other solar systems around the cosmos, as well to acquire new skills and uh, skills, and that will be useful for my future job. I think that's something that kind of drawn, uh, drawn me into this internship. And then I was also drawn to apply for this internship since I was doing it alongside some of my classmates. I was also able to pursue something that I can later uh, present to my family. Nice. Mahalo. Um, something to note for those who are watching this uh, discussion is a little bit background about Ahua Heinoa. Ahua Heinoa started back in about 2015, 2016 at Imiloa. And it began with a discussion about wanting to name discoveries that are found on Mauna Kea and naming them in a Hawaiian way and with a Hawaiian name and having that recognized globally. And since then, it's evolved into other types of um, putting forth, I guess, they're calling forth names and projects. Um, but that practice of Ahua Heinoa, I think there are about six uh, discoveries that were um, either found from Mauna Kea's telescopes or Mauna Kea telescopes uh, participated with other telescopes around the world in its discovery. And uh, Imiloa was uh, in a great position and able to work with the scientists uh, to give these names and then have them adopted by the International Astron Astronomical Union. Did I get that right, Julian? Yes. I knew. <laughs> Yes. Um, so something that was great that happened um, this past fall was uh, this opportunity that I briefly mentioned uh, to participate in a naming of an exoplanet. And as Dr. Julian mentioned, that is his field of study. Um, and so we thought that it'd be a really great opportunity for him um, to come in and engage with our interns and especially our interns to be able to have direct access and discussion with someone who is in the field of exoplanets. Um, so I kind of want to just ask the two of you, uh, what it, was that like? Um, Julian, maybe why you said yes to coming <laughs> to that uh, initial presentation, and then kind of what were some takeaways from that experience that you uh, got from the interns? Um, yeah, so there's, I mean, there's many reasons why I said yes. The First of all, like, 
be able to name uh, astronomical object is an opportunity that is very rare, um, especially in our field uh, in exoplanets. Um, there is, we found a lot of exoplanets, like about 5,000, but only a few have like proper names. That's not just a code. Uh, and that's because um, we're, we're still in the infancy of discovering them. And the process of naming exoplanets is, is, uh, is a quite complicated process. And so being able to, to, to be involved in that is, it was very, uh, very important to me. And, and I'm very happy to be, to be helping in some way. Um, also, I love sharing uh, what I do. So uh, sharing uh, my field with the Ahua uh, Heinoa uh, students was really uh, uh, rewarding for me too. Um, but um, yeah, it's, uh, the the difficulty I think for me was that the exoplanets that were uh, going to be named uh, were not detected with the technique I'm using, <laughs> and so it was a little harder for me to to understand the the characteristics of the planet. I'm not, you know, the the scientist that analyze the data. I'm the guy that builds the instrument that takes the data. And so um, it was a little bit out of my comfort zone, uh, but I enjoyed that uh, doing this research and trying to find the information for, for all the students. Um, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a great experience. Um, I'm very glad I, I said yes and I had this opportunity. <laughs> Mahalo. Uh, Kao Kepo, what was, what was that experience like uh, for, for you? I think that experience was very insightful and very new to me because I've been given the opportunity to present a name of, for the exoplanet uh, at the 26B Star Panel of Expert Judges in Astronomy and Hawaiian Language. I think it was very beneficial for me because I was also able to learn that you can't just translate a word in English to Hawaiian because in Hawaiian culture, uh, Hawaiian words have such deep meaning and also how those words can be connected to different mo'olalos or stories. So I think that is something I took away from this experience is that when me and my fellow uh, intern or partner, Kaini Gavina Alvena, and we presented the names of Favelo and Lima Kua for this exoplanet, I think we both found a way to incorporate uh, Hawaiian traditional culture and, and language towards these exoplanets so that later on, our scientists can refer to these exoplanets in Hawaiian names, so those names could live on. Thanks, mahalo. Um, something to note is that we actually had time uh, for the interns to um, meet with different experts, and then uh, one of them was Dr. Larry Kimura as well, who uh, was at the beginning of the creation of Ahua Heinoa and was, you know, the first one to put forth names to be adopted. Um, so what was that process like working with uh, Dr. Larry Kimura? Either of you can answer. I, I know Julian sat at the panel with him and there was probably some discussion during the, the time of the competition when the different groups presented their names. Uh, there might have been, you know, discussion that was interesting there or even Kahokepa things that uh, maybe you learned from Dr. Kimura that helped to give insight on the naming process. If I can just start, um, I think, I mean, I, I only saw, you know, the during the panel discussion with, uh, with Dr. Kimura, but I was, it felt like a very special moment because they were discussing how to, to call an exoplanet, like not just giving a name to, to that specific one, but just to say the word exoplanet, that's a word I'm using a uh, hundred times a day but having a hawaiian world that actually describes what i'm doing is is uh, is very special and uh yeah i was very moved to be uh to be to to witness that basically yeah Nani. uh what i learned um when we met with uh kumulari kimura is uh again like every hawaiian word has a deep meaning and he also brought up like what julian said how uh, exoplanets, there are certain names. So one of them is Hokulele, which is something I never knew before. So I think just learning from him and learning these new words and how me and my 
fellow interns could incorporate those words into the naming of uh, the exoplanets is very important and I thought it was very exciting. Yeah, Nani, uh, that's that's true, you know, in the work that um, is being done in different uh, spaces, but as we're talking about Iniloa, um, you know, scientific terms, astronomical terms, how do we engage in these types of discussions uh, while looking at uh, current and upcoming uh, astronomical tools, astronomical uh, theories, and all these words, right, like an exoplanet, how do we incorporate and look to our traditions to give us insight on how we can have those discussions in Hawaiian and kind of go into that uh, the space to give room for Olalo Hawaii in that way. Uh, mahalo nui the two of you for your feedback on that. We are still waiting for an update uh, on the Exo World naming competition. So that is still underway and we should be knowing sometime in March um, if the names that were submitted are selected for the exoplanet and its whole star. Something else that uh, had happened so far in the the current cohort for Ahua Heinoa uh, was actually a trip up to Mauna Kea. So in addition to the the EXO World Naming Competition, um, our interns are currently working on development of a new exhibit at Iniloa. And part of that research process was, you know, having the time to go up uh, to Mauna Kea to look at the dark sky and to actually see uh, the perspectives of what dark skies look like uh, through an ast astronomical lens and for astronomers and people who work up on the mountain. Um, so I kind of want to spend some time talking story a little bit about that. Um, maybe Julian, you can start off. Uh, he gave a tour for one of the groups um, of Subaru Telescope, as well as Canada France Hawaii Telescope uh, with another group. And we did rotations between the two telescopes, had time to uh, have discussions down at Halepuhaku, the, uh, right above the visitor center at the 9000 level. Uh, but Julian, maybe share a little bit with us on you know, what was maybe the most exciting thing that you uh, got to do with the interns while up on Mauna Kea, and if there was a key takeaway from that experience? Oh, um, I mean, the, the the whole experience was great. Um, uh, first of all, I, I, I've i given a lot of tools of Subaru Telescope because I really love like sharing what we do up there and uh, just showing the telescope to people and showing the mountain because it's a, it's a very unique experience. And uh, um, just, you know, having the students that, you know, we interacted for a few weeks and having them see in real life what the, what the, the telescopes and, and, and the, the summit of Mauna Kea uh, was a very, uh, very great. Um, and um, um, the takeaway, I don't know, there's, there's so many, like the, uh, the whole tour was, uh, was a, a great experience. We, we saw both telescopes. We saw the sunset from the summit that was amazing. Um, and then we did a little bit of stargazing at Halepohaku, uh, had some nice discussion about dark skies in Halepohaku. So that was also, uh, very nice, uh, because, you know, I experienced dark skies, um, maybe, more than than some and it's uh it's nice to be able to talk about it um and uh, yeah um i don't know i don't have like one specific moment uh, maybe when we arrived and one of the students i mean they started playing in the snow because it's hawaii and you don't have a lot of places that have snow <laughs> and so for some of them it was the first time at the summit and the first time in the snow touching snow so that was also a uh, great to see that. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, being able to go up to Mauna Kea uh, for some was their first time. Um, and that was a really special moment uh, for them to, apologies, that's my dog. <laughs> um, but uh, Kao Kepa, share with us, you know, what was the experience like for you from your perspective? Uh, the experience for me, in my perspective, is I've only been to the summit once, so I think this was a great opportunity to to go back to the summit of Mauna Kea and to also listen and to the thoughts of experts like Julian when he gave us the tour of the Subaru uh, telescope and the Canada France Hawaii telescope, because the only telescope I heard of before was the TMT. I never really heard of any other 
telescopes above Mauna Kea. So I think it was very exciting and to learn about these telescopes. And I think a takeaway that I learned from this is that you don't be afraid to ask questions because very few opportunities come. So I think to make that time productive, I think you should just always ask questions, whether or not you feel scared or nervous, you should just ask your questions so that you can improve and you can also learn something new. That's that's really great. Um, I think that's a great Havina or lesson. Um, for those who are maybe interested in the work that is being done um, at Ahula Heinoa, at Imiloa, I think sometimes it's just asking. Uh, that's the hardest part to get things going. Um, but we never really know what people's appetite are unless we ask. Um, so that being said, um, I'm curious if there are any uh, suggestions that you folks might have for those who are watching from around the world. You know, for those who are interested in expanding their language efforts, um, or maybe if they're experts in the field, you know, that want to engage with their uh, Indigenous communities and their languages, what are some things that you would uh, suggest to those viewers, advice maybe that you would give to them on ways that they can begin that conversation or exchange of knowledge? I know it's a loaded one, so maybe we'll start with Kahal Kefla, <laughs> and then we can go to Dr. Lozi. I think something I would suggest is to find a way to incorporate the thoughts that the students say uh, for the language efforts, because I think finding a way to incorporate uh, a student's perspective or thoughts like a Hua He Ino did, I think it draws interest into the student because I think if a student feels like they're unheard, then they won't find the interest to add anything or present anything. So I think just in trying to find a way to incorporate the thoughts and what the students say into something like the exhibit or the Ahua Heinoa naming of the exoplanet and all of these things that Ahua Heinoa does will lead to a better uh, outcome. Um, it's a really hard question to answer, uh, but um, I mean, as a as a French person in a foreign country, and you know, uh, a foreign country that that also has you know uh, its own history and uh, a lot of different ind indigenous groups, it's uh, very important to to learn as much as possible about the 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 indigenous culture that that you're part of or I mean that you're interacting with um I'm I'm <laughs> learning slowly Hawaiian on on Duolingo for example uh and uh it's been more than a year now and I I feel like I've made progress enough that I kind of understand a little bit sometimes uh if I hear discussions in Hawaiian uh and that's that's so rewarding because I'm, I'm not going to try to speak at all, but it's uh, it's really nice to to have this perspective. I mean, the Hawaiian language is so uh, an important part of the Hawaiian culture that um, like in, it's really nice to see um, to to be able to to not just use Hawaiian words, but also just understand what they mean, really. And um, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, <laughs> it's really hard, but in in my work. Um, like we are trying to be more aware of this and and try to to integrate some of of that culture in our work um, and uh, and just be part of of the community. Try to help um, uh, in the community, uh, even in non astronomical related activities. Just you know, like uh, planting trees on Malakia. This is one of my hobbies, and I, I love that. Um, yeah, so, you know, it, there's a lot of, of different aspects that you can do to help, um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> no, mahalo nui to the both of you. Um, that was a really, really great discussion. And, um, I think, you know, something to say about it too, is that I think we're still at the beginning phase of it ourselves, um, with Ahua Heinoa, there have been, you know, some 
cohorts. There have been, you know, some names that were uh, put forth, but also saying that there's a lot of growth uh, to come forward uh, in the future. And there's a lot of opportunity as well uh, in astronomy, but also in different sciences too, as we expand the scope of what we consider to be, um, you know, Hawaii and Hawaiian sciences and how we can further engage Olalo Hawaii in those areas. Um, we are at the end of our discussion, but I wanted to just leave this last opportunity. Um, if you folks have any mana'o, any thoughts of what the future could hold uh, in regards to Olalo Hawaii um, in the domain of astronomy or in sciences, or, you know, as we talk about, you know, expanding Hawaiian language revitalization and normalization throughout society, um, what are some things that you folks are hopeful of or that you start to see yourselves? The programs like Ahua Heinoa is, is uh, are really important because they, uh, we need to have more of this um, interaction between the scientists and, and, you know, the, the more like the general population, like um, students of other fields and just like everyone that that's working on Monarchia should should be able to talk to each other, like the the scientists on the mountain, but also the the scientists that do like the the conservation efforts. Um, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of different fields that that are uh, located on this mountain, and and we should be able to <clears throat> to talk to each other and and be able to understand uh, what each other other do. And uh, having the the link of the the Hawaiian language uh, is is very important. I mean, this is uh, this is uh, great to be able to to give some Hawaiian names to to things that we do. It, it's uh, it's such a a great experience. Uh, I think the future of Hawaiian language is looking really strong right now because I can see in not only in astronomy, but also uh, at my school, Kekula Onavio Kalani Opu'u, where there are more students that want to learn Hawaiian language. And because of that, then uh, these programs such as Ohua Heinoa, I think there's gonna be more students who want to be involved with this program because at a very young age, they're learning Hawaiian language. So they can be more connected to their Hawaiian culture. So I think the future of Hawaiian language, Hawaiian culture, and Hawaiian heritage is looking really strong so far. And I think a lesson that I can take away from this is that even though it's so strong right now, we should not stop fighting for to revitalize the Hawaiian culture. Because I think if we stop now, then we won't grow anymore. So I think even though we're strong now, we shouldn't have this mindset that, oh, we did everything we could, we just keep going, keep fighting so that the future of Hawaiian language can improve and can get stronger throughout the years. Mahalo Nui uh, Kefa, senior graduating. Excited to see what you do in the next five years. Uh, same with you too, Dr. Julian, um, you know, with the different types of tools that you're creating for discoveries up on Mauna Kea, I can only imagine what the future holds for us. Um, so that is the end of our discussion. Mahalo nui again to the two of you for joining in and sharing your uh, insight. Anahua he inoa with those who are participating with us at the He Olelo Ola conference. Mahalo nui. Mahalo. Mahalo. Through efforts like Ahua Heinoa, we are putting our Olalo Hawaii at the core and forefront of scientific efforts. And this is yet another way of seeking justice and reclaiming domains for our Olalo to thrive and ultimately our Hawaiian way of being. Uh, without any other Q&A questions that came through, uh, it is also my pleasure to mahalo everybody uh, for joining us today. Mahalo to the panelists, mahalo to the Heolalola Hilo Field Study and the ICLDC conference organizers. Mahalo to you, the participants who sat through all of these discussions and gave questions for our panelists. Mahalo to the Isle Interpret uh, Group for the American Sign Language Translation and Closed Captioning, as well as the individuals and the individual and collective work that we are all doing for our respective communities. I hope that this uh, <clears throat> this gathering gave 
some more uh, insight, inspiration, um, and got us a little bit more invigorated to go back into our uh, respectful spaces and do the good work that we are doing in order to perpetuate, revitalize, and renormalize our Indigenous languages. The recording of both days of the Hilo Field Study will be available at uh, mokuolohonua.com. That's www.mokuola. H O N U A dot com, which has many other Indigenous language resources that are available for you to access as well. So until the next time, Ahuiho Malamapono. Aloha.